Okay, good afternoon once again, everyone. I think we have just about half of the persons who are registered for this, uh, who registered for this workshop, this webinar. Um, so I think we can get started. We have just over half um, of the, the total number. All right. Um, welcome to this, this particular webinar. Um, I am Justin Zephyrin, and uh, we have a guest facilitator for today's workshop. Um, so I will be functioning in more of a, an assistant role and happy to do so. Um, so this particular session, we're going to look at Blackboard Collaborate. Now it's designed to be a very quick um, orientation um, to the basics of Blackboard Collaborate. So in this session, we're going to look at things such as creating a Blackboard um, activity or room in your My Learning course then creating a session in that room. And then um, we will go on to look at some of the different features um, in Blackboard, namely the, the implementation of breakout rooms and polls. All right. And of course, along the way, we're also going to look at some other um, features um, as time allows, whether it's annotations, all right, so in other words, allowing persons to, to, to make annotations on the, on the whiteboard and so on. Sharing documents, presenting in Blackboard, um, and a host of other things. And we have them right here in front of you. Um, and of course, sharing content, as I said earlier, uh, and even changing some of the participants' rules. So in the, with regard to that, um, that would speak to, let's say you would like your students to, to you want to take a more learner-centered approach and allows students to present during your sessions, then we're going to show you that as well. All right, at the very bottom of your screen, of the slide, sorry, you will see a couple icons. Um, one of them, on the, on the extreme left, um, you'll see one with a little blue tick on it, sorry, a green tick on it. That tick, um, and, and our guest facilitator will elaborate on that in a bit, but it, it indicates any particular status, if you're confused, if you're happy, if you're sad, that sort of thing. Um, next to that, on the right of that, you're going to see the microphone icon. And the microphone icon is used if you would really like to say something. All right. Now, by default, um, well, we're asking that you ensure that your microphones are off um, by simply clicking on it and ensuring that there's a strike through over the microphone icon, all right? So that way we won't get any background noises and so on. Next to that, you're going to see a camera icon. Um, by default as well, that is strike through. Um, but let's say if in a, in a classroom context, you would like to share your, your, your camera um, or your video, then that would be the icon to do that. However, this is not recorded for, the, this is not uh, required for this particular session. So that can remain uh, with the strike through in it. On the right of that, you would see an icon with uh, that looks like a raised hand, someone raising a hand. Um, and that icon, once you click on it, it would um, let us know that you have a question. It's almost like raising a question, raising your hand in a class, a face-to-face -face class session um, to ask a question or make a comment. Yeah, so if you have the, any sort of questions or comments or queries um, that you'd like to bring to the fore, we're asking that you simply click on that icon and, um, and when you, you, you're queued to do so, to voice your, your, your query and so on, you can click on the microphone and we can all hear you. You also have the chat um, feature, which most of you seem to be familiar with because we, we're already chatting in there. So of course you could also state your questions in there, and we'll um, so we have both ways. All right, um, so we're ready to get started, and right off the bat, um, I'm just going to show you a poll. You would see a little small, small uh, window, so to speak, in front of your in front of your screen or over the slide, um, and it's really you know we want to know have you ever used Blackboard Collaborate. Um, we know that this entire, uh, uh, with the current uh, COVID dispensation, um, it's quite, 
quite a period of adjustment, yeah? Um, so we went from face-to-face -face or blended approaches then to emergency remote teaching, and now we're into just remote teaching. And to that end, we have a mandate um, to use Blackboard Collaborate along with my learning as the main platforms for remote teaching and learning on our camp, well, from the, this campus. Um, so yes, yeah, so we would like to, to hear from you, um, to get from you, to have an idea, you know, how to pace this particular session. If you, you've used it before, simply click yes. If not, simply click no. Um, as we see, um, well, you'll see in just a bit, the responses are very close. They're very, very close. And I see we have some persons joining still. So feel free, guys, for those of you who are just um, joining us, simply click on the, on the appropriate response. As it stands, we have 50-50. Anybody else? I'll just give a couple more seconds to, 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 to get those responses in. And five, four, three, two, one. Um, and I had to count, do, do a, 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 a verbal countdown because we no longer have the time in Blackboard Collaborate. All right, guys. So we have here, and you should see the responses. Um, you should see the, the results of the poll we just took. And we'll show you how to do this in, later on in this session. Um, we see that the majority, a very small, uh, it's barely a majority, um, have never used Blackboard Collaborate. And that is OK. That is OK. That's perfectly fine um, out of those who have responded. So um, I think that's pretty good. Um, and I will introduce our, our guest facilitator um, in just a bit. Now, this is quite interesting. I like this. So I think my next question as we go forward, and you'll see another poll up here, would be, um, if you have access to your My Learning course, yeah? Um, in fact, we can probably take that in just about another minute or so um, as after I introduce the, the guest facilitator. All right? Is everyone okay so far? Feel free to type in the chat. Okay, great. <laughs> yes, Mark. Okay, Joanne, I see we have um, the icon, the, the emoji. Okay, good, good. Emoticon. Nice. Okay, great. So we're going to get things started uh, at this point. So I'm going to introduce the, uh, we have a guest facilitator for this particular session. Um, and she works at the School of Education. Um, and she's been doing some, some training, and she, she supports the staff, the faculty over there. Um, and so, you know, we found it a good idea to, to bring her on for this particular session um, so you hear another voice besides mine, right? Okay. Um, so <laughs> I introduce to you Ms. Michelle Taylor. Hi, um, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Michelle. And Michelle is going to take us through the, she's going to be leading this particular session. Um, and I will be assisting by, of course, paying attention to the chat and raise hands and answering questions along the way. All right. So, Michelle, over to you. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, as Justin mentioned, my name is Michelle. And we will be going through Blackboard Collaborate. And I have a little um, icebreaker for you. Right. Um, I know um, Justin just went through if you were able to use um, Blackboard Collaborate before and we will come back to this self checklist. So after we do the Blackboard Collaborate, we will come back to see if you are able to do some of these things. OK. All right. So I will put um, in the chat. Um, some of you may be experiencing some of these things today, 
right? And I will put um, in the chat a link to Answer Garden. You can click on the link. Did I put send it? Okay, just now. All right, click on the link. It will take you to what we call the Answer Garden, where you can type, how do you feel today? Right. I know because of COVID, we are doing multiple things at the same time. We are teaching from home. And because we are teaching from home, um, we are faced with all these things that we still have to do because we are home. OK. So I am going to share. my screen with you all. That's not you all seeing it. Just a minute, I didn't click share. All right, so I want you to type one word or phrase that explains how you feel today. Okay, mega overwhelmed, overwhelmed. So at the end of this, I hope, my hope is that, um, it would reduce some of your stress and you will feel a little more comfortable using Blackboard Collaborate. Okay. Now keep in mind, this is one way in which you can engage your students in Blackboard. Um, and it's a simple share screen feature, which we'll get into in just a bit. Um, so yes, this is one, one exercise, one way of breaking the ice, one way of um, having that, that that introduction to your particular session, all right? <laughs> yes. All right, and the more people um, use the same term, the larger the term is. So it's uh, a nice feature to use with your class, okay? So let's continue. I see that most persons are overwhelmed. <laughs> and plenty of people saying pressure. <laughs> I, I will confess that was, I, I put a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, but definitely. It's anonymous, sorry. Yes. yes. Um, and we know that, that, you know, with this whole transition to, Matter of company, exactly, Janet, exactly. And we know that this whole this whole transition to, to um, remote teaching and learning it, it happened pretty quickly by by some standards. Um, but you're not in it alone, and we're here to support as best as we can. All right. All right. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay, so let me just stop sharing and go back to my presentation. What we're going to go into first yes. is um, going into our my e-learning account. So let me share that. Logging in. So we're going to give you some time to log into your My eLearning account, right? And if you do have a course shell and you can get into your course shell, I want you to log into your course shell at this time. All right? So I'm just going to log in. Okay. Uh, place a poll if you don't mind, Michelle, um, the poll that we have here. Yes. Uh, so for those of you who have a My Learning course, we just want to know so we can know, you know, how to tailor the rest of the flow of the session. Um, 
So I see some persons don't have access to my learning course, and that's okay. That's okay. Well, hmm. well it looks like I don't have access either because um, <laughs> it crashed yesterday, I know. My right. learning crashed yesterday, yeah. so I'm hoping that um, do you have access? Um, yes. Are um, you getting through? Let me try again. Now, guys, um, you would know that my learning is has been, I wouldn't say it crashed, but it, it's been given a bit of, um, uh, it's moving a little on the slow side um, because of the um, traffic, the heavy traffic and heavy use of the platform, especially to, to get to Blackboard. All right, and that's okay. All right, I see in the poll we have, um, we have again a close, a close uh, response. So what I'm going to do, for those of you who do not have, before we move any further, for those of you who, who do not have access to your My Learning course, I'm sending this link in the chat. I just posted it. So if you need to get access to your um, My Learning course, you're going to first have to access, um, make a request for the enrollment key. All right, once you get the once you make a request to, to get the enrollment key, it's just a simple form you could fill out now as I kind of walk you through it. Um, once you complete that form, it's a very short form. You're just gonna insert your name, um, the the course code, um, a contact um, number perhaps, or email, and then of course identify the, the course code and so on that the information that you need. All right. Once you fill that, once you complete that form, you will receive via your staff email the enrollment keys. All right. When you get the enrollment keys, you're gonna go into My Learning. You log into My Learning, and then you click um, Search for Courses. All right. You click Search for Courses. And then it's going to take you to um, a search field where you just insert the course code. You locate your course by clicking on it. And then it'll prompt you to insert the enrollment keys. All right, so I'm just outlining that process for, for those of you who still have to get access to your courses. That is the process. All right, I have it on the slideshow, but I think um, we're supposed to be going to the actual site now. Are you there, Michelle? Can't log in. For some reason, I'm not able to log in. All right. That's, yes. All right. Let me know when you when you get through. Um, right. So Janet, you have the enrollment key, but you're still not able to log into my learning. Okay. That's okay. Anybody else? Do Do you have the enrollment keys that you need? All right, fair enough. Um, does everyone, was anyone, was every, well, those who have my learning access, um, were you able to log into my learning? Okay, Roy got access. Okay, good. Michelle, you can keep trying on your end. Yes, logged in. Lystra, no access. Okay, Georgina, you got through. Okay, Jill, you, you're in a similar position in the sense that you um you have your enrollment key, but you weren't able to you're still not able to access yet. Okay. That's okay. So what we're gonna do very quickly, guys, um and Michelle probably I could show them on my end. Yes. All right. And um and you could let me know when you when you get through. Yeah, I'm not getting through at all. <laughs> and I got through this morning, so I don't know what happened. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. It happens. So, and this is just a good um point to note, guys, that when you you um when you're trying to get onto my learning, you want to try, especially if you're going to do a, a a live session, you want to try and do so, you know. A couple, a, a little while before, because very often um, the session gets because there's so much traffic. Most persons try to schedule their sessions between eight and four, so we have a lot of you know of people doing it, at, accessing it at the same time. So it sometimes slows down. 
All right, so my recommendation would be to, to have a little backup. Now we have two backups here in the form of a PowerPoint, and of course <laughs> I have my, um, on my end I can access. So what I will do, and Michelle, you could let me know as soon as you get through. I'll just kind of spearhead in the meantime. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and another thing, guys, this is also another tip. You want to make sure when you, um, it, it, it's good that if, when you're going to, to do this for the first or second time, that you have, you do it, don't do it alone. Do it with at least one colleague or even a student rep if you have one. Um, so that person can, can, it's easier when you have that collaboration. Yeah, and that person can assist you. Um, in a case like this, you never know what unforeseen circumstances could, uh, could arise. So let's go forward. Um, I think most persons have logged in already. And for those of you who do not have access to my learning, that's okay. Everything is going to be illustrated here. All right, so you can follow along and you can also make the no take notes of, this, of the particular steps. Um, so when you, you get access to my learning, it's a smooth flow for you. Is, All right. Yes. Oh, you got through, Michelle? Nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's move straight on ahead. All right, so guys, I'm going to show you how to... Um, Turn that up. Set up. Yes, how to set up a, a, a Blackboard room. All right. Um, I guess, Michelle, you could probably go ahead and explain the steps, and I will just illustrate. Yes, no yeah. problem. So the, this is what you will see the first time you come into your course before you may have imported any um, information or before you add any um, items to your course shell, All right? You may want to set up your virtual, um, what we call the Blackboard collab, um, Collaborate Virtual Classroom where you have your online um, synchronous session. The first thing you have to do is turn editing on. And Justin will indicate. When you turn editing on, you will know that it is on where, when you see those the four headed arrows and add or an activity or resource as well as edit. Right? So the first thing you do is click on add an activity or resource it will take you to a set of icons where you can choose blackboard collaborate icon all right and add it to your course you need now what you do is you give your um your virtual classroom. This is your virtual classroom where you're going to have these sessions. So you give it a name. Now you only need to create this once, okay? Because this is for your entire course. Within that course, you will create the session. So once you name your classroom, virtual sessions or virtual classroom or whatever you want to name it, um, you can save and return to the course shell. So I'm going to give you two minutes to do that for those of you who have your um, your course shell. You are in. You have access to your course shell already. Um, I'm going to give you two minutes to go in, click on add an activity or resource, click on Blackboard Collaborate icon. Give your course a name, your um, virtual classroom a name, right? And then save and return to your course shell. But in this case, Justin, you just click cancel, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you already created it. Once you have created it, you just want to turn editing off. Okay, so I want you to indicate for me um, if you have done it or not by clicking on the my status icon at the bottom, the little man face, man, half a man, 
there at the bottom and clicking agree if you have turned off you um, you have completed it if you have access and you have done it um, please indicate so that we can see whether you have done it or not okay very good very good so we have a few people who have access and have said indicated that they have done it so we can move on Good. So we want to click on the classroom now and set up the sessions within the classroom. Okay. So for example, if you have um, three or four tutors within your classroom, this is where you create sessions for them within the classroom. So basically a timetable in the classroom. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is go through all the settings right now, create the sessions for your class, and um, set up your classes. So um, I clicked create a, um, Justin clicked create a session, and he's giving my session a name, all right? So the next thing we're going to do is select guest access, right? In, um, before we go on, Justin, there are two tabs at the top, right under after you have given them a name. There's the event details, which we're going to fill out, and the session settings, right? So we're going to go through and um, do all the settings, um, select all the settings that we want for a class or a session. All right, the first thing you want to do is select, um, do the event details, and we are going to select guest access. This allows um, us to get a link that we can invite people to our persons to our class. Those that um, usually it will be a guest lecturer because our students will have access through the My eLearning platform. So, for example, if you have, uh, so for example, Dr. Ferreira, I see, let's say you have a linguist in the field out there, you may want to bring that linguist, um, have that linguist join, um, a field linguist join the, the session, um, you know, for what, to give some insight um, to whatever your, your presentation is about. This is a good way of doing it, all right? Um, I see we have a couple other <laughs> persons here. I see Mr. Marie, good. So same thing, if you have a musician out there who can give um, some insight, you know, and it, it, it allows guys for a more authentic learning approach as well. Yeah, because now you're bridging the gap between the class environment, the classroom environment, well, in this case, a virtual environment, virtual classroom environment, and the real world or the field out there. All right? Go ahead. Um, now you need to select, if you click on guest role, you will see participant, presenter, and um, what is it, moderator, right? You want to give your guest a participant role because if you do choose to give the link, everybody will come in with whatever um, role you have selected there. So. You can always change the rules once they come into the session, and we will show you how to do that. Exactly. You don't want to have all the students become enter the room as moderators because then you're gonna they're gonna hijack your session. All right. So make sure you by default it's set to participants. So you could just leave this as is. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Michelle. Then we have to set the start and end of our session. We can click on start. So we know what date we are starting our class and the time, right? So we can set the time for the class. We can also set the end of the session. But if we want, if we choose, we can set the end of the session to no end, which means it's like you have, you have an open classroom and whenever you have a class, you can just tell them use the same link and come into the classroom. 
right? So that link is basically an open link um, until the end of the semester or whenever your course is finished. If you have any questions, you can raise your hands or type it in the chat. Okay. Um, um, so, so well, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, please. Yeah, hi, it's Soleil. Um, Soleil. Yeah, I'm looking at the, the screen that Justin is sharing right now, but my, my, my linen, it's very choked. So like I have a very tiny, uh, yes, to look at the virtual session. Like I can't even, I'm just not seeing as much information on the page. And because I've used it before, like when I, when I schedule multiple sessions, Sometimes I can't even see the other sessions because the screen is so choked and I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, is something that is more of a back end kind of design aspect of it. Um, but there is, just be, in, be mindful that there are two boxes, two scroll bars. Um, so it, 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 it can, especially when you have a lot of sessions. It can become a little, um, I, you know, I admit it will. It can become a little bit, um, not the easiest thing to, to navigate through. All right, um, but yeah, the the I'm not sure if you are accessing it via a laptop or a desktop. Um, I think if you have a, a nice big screen, it helps a little bit. Um, for me, I know if I'm trying to access it from my phone or a, a, you know a mobile device, then it. it can seem a little, a little bit on the cluttered or choked up side, so to say. Well, it's, I am using a laptop, and the laptop is the laptop is the one that gives me a choked screen. But if I use my right. tablet, the tablet gives me a proper screen. So I didn't know if it was a setting <laughs> that I had or something like that. No, it would normally no. Let me, as you said that as well. This brings me to another point, and it's related to what you're saying. Um, Blackboard is 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 very much um, configured. Or related to the, or is affected by the configuration of the, um, on your particular device, so it may be something that is related to to, to this as well in terms of the layout of it, um, where there's a small, you know, sub block or a very sparsely laid out um, page, um, as well. You know, it also affects the let's say if your machine, and not yours specifically, but generally speaking. If the time on your machine is is wrong or you know skewed, then it throws off the actual timing of the session when it when when students can access that session. So a word of caution or just a tip, and you'll get these along the way, just so you know, so you know it doesn't catch you by surprise and you know what to do. Um, try to ensure that your machine has the correct time um, when you're setting up the 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 Blackboard session. Because Blackboard seems to pull from these things even to that to those details. All right, and I, I think it's also related to what you were saying, um, Soleil. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. I see Jesse had a question. If um, if the session is left open, no end, does it affect the recording of the session? No, it does not. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, Definitely. When the session ends, it ends. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, Savrina also asked, um, said that if she has a session each Monday, that do she select no end so that the student can use the same link each week? Yes, you can do that. Okay. So for everybody else's. Um, information um general information you can leave it um no end if you have a recurring class a recurring session every week you can set it up like that or you can use a repeat session as well but the re um, repeat session means that you have a time limit um begin and end of your class okay so uh, between those hours, that is when you have a session, right? If they've set the hours vary of your class, then you will need to use no end. 
The next thing is the early entry. Um, you usually put 15 minutes, um, 30 to 45 minutes. You have up to about 60 minutes that the students can enter the classroom before the class starts, the session starts. And this allows them to go come in, check their microphone, check their video, and those things before the session starts. Um, somebody was asking if the session means it equates to a module. Not necessarily. It means that anytime you want to have a synchronous session with your class, that's what it refers to. Right. All right. So once you finish a, setting these information, you want to set the session um, details. So we did the event details, and now we're going to do the session details. Right. Somebody asked, Angelique asked, if um, we don't need to set up repeat sessions. Repeat session works only if you have a session at that particular time on repeated days. So if every Monday um, or every day you have a session 9 to 12, um, you can do use repeat sessions. You will use no end if you your sessions are at different times during the day. It's repeated, but... Um, at different times during the day. Okay. So I, I'm sorry, can can I just get some clarity please before we move on to this? Yes, so, go ahead. I, so I have already I set mine up as a, a as a repeat session every Wednesday, four to six. That's our lecture class time. Mm -hmm. And I set it up to end, of course, when class ends. That is correct, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. I'm not doing tutorials through here. So sure. this is fine. And then, so we don't need to do anything else. We don't have to set up an external link for the students to connect. They will automatically see the Blackboard Collaborate link when they open up My Learning and be able yeah. to connect that way, yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. No problem. So, and, and, yeah, Angelique, yeah. one more thing, um, one more thing. They would also be able to follow the same um, navigation to access the session recordings, which we'll show in just a bit. All right. So it's a sort of one stop shop for everything. It's not, you know, like if you have Zoom, you'll have to share the link to the session, then you have to share the link to the recording, you know, all that kind of stuff. But this, doing it this way or this avenue, it makes it a sort of one stop shop. All right. Go ahead, Michelle. Sorry. Okay. No, not a problem. Um, so in the session setting, the default default attendee role is participant, which we will leave. Um, I, I think in just a sec, just a sec, I see we have um, Krishna. Do we have to set a start date and time every time we, if we will select no end session? No. And the answer is no, no Krishna. All right, um, Savrina, no, you don't need an event description. That can stay. Um, black. Yeah. <laughs> optional. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Mish. All right. So after um, we can leave that as the default participant role because we can always change that during the session, give um, other persons um, different access, different levels of access. All right. Um, then we can allow recording downloads. This means that when the student comes in, they can access the download the recordings. Um, we may not want to anonymize, anonymize the chat messages because we want to see what who is asking what question. So we need to leave that unchecked because we want to know who is asking or who is chatting in the session. Now, as we just to go back a little bit on recording downloads. I'm not sure if many of you would have seen the the um, message from the, the campus registrar with regard to um, that sort of uh, amendment to be made 
to your um, outlines, the campus registrar um, suggested that um, it's just an amendment, a policy amendment, that um, disallows students from recording um, or even sharing recorded material, lecture material, um, on social media and you know for personal use and so on. So while they may be able to download the recording, they are not allowed to share it. I know that was a major concern, so that was addressed and just giving you an update given the context of this particular session. All right? Go ahead, Misha. Right. So you can scroll up a little bit. Right. Um, moderator, um, show moderator profile pictures. So if you have a profile pic, you, it may, it will be show, showed on the screen. Right. You, as you know, in Zoom, you all see the moderator. Whoever is there, they can show or not show their picture. Um, and then there are some permissions that you may want to give the participants to share their audio, share their video, post chat messages, and draw on the whiteboard and files, right? So you can decide to check or to allow them to do um, a number of these things. And these things you can also tweak during the session if it becomes a distraction, yeah. all right? So while you're um, speaking to them, somebody's drawing up on your screen, you can go in and um, remove the, the check, adjust the settings. All right? You can also, um, well, we can leave this one, which is allow attendees to join using their telephone. Um, another thing you may want to look at is the private chat. You do, may not want participants to chat privately among themselves. So in other words, you, they may click on somebody's name and send them a message back and forth. So you may want to check that they only chat with you privately, right? So they can chat with the entire group or only with the moderators because you don't want them having a conversation in the background and classes going on, <laughs> right? Um, mod moderators to supervise all private chats, but then you don't want them to be chatting privately in the background anyway. So you can leave that unchecked. If your class is larger than 250 participants, um, then you need to allow for large classes or large sessions. So this needs to be checked if your classes are large, okay? And then now you might when, want to go ahead, Justin. When, when you click this, um, it, it, uh, it automatically disables other features in the platform. So, you know, because it's really the platform making adjustments to um, ensure, to, 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 to allow for greater efficiency. It's almost like, you know, the human body, if you exert certain things, or, or you, you know, your body reacts to what you put in it, you know, or what you do with it. So you would notice here when we click large session, um, some of the features are by default dis disabled. All right. So you want to be mindful of that. Right. Mm -hmm. I see Mr. McCree um, uh, say that they can still chat via WhatsApp. Yes, they can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you also want to hide any profanities that they may use in the chat. So you may want to select the profanity filter. Once you have completed selecting all your um, settings, then you click create. And your session has been created. And you would notice as well, if you go back to the event details, now that you see the, 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 the session, now you have the access link, the guest link, that you can copy and share with um, your guest lecturer. All right? Yeah. And, it is. and that's your session. Would you like us to go it over quickly again? So we will give you a couple minutes I'm not seeing all the session options. How do students get the link? Um, okay. 
one, the students get the link once they have access to my e-learning. Right? Do you want to show them the students' view? Yeah, I was gonna I was just gonna do that. <laughs> So the student could literally, this is what it looks like. All right, so I just switched my role to a student. And you can do the same as well. Um, it's a simple little drop down collapsible menu at the top next to your name. And you could click on um, switch role to. You would normally see that. All right, so anything that you create in your course and you want to see what it looks like or if students can see it or access it, you might want to use that option, that feature. So this is what the students will see, virtual sessions or classroom. They click on it, and it's just as you would, you would approach it. Um, they would see um, the title of the session, as well as the dates and so on. So if it's a pre-scheduled um, session, they would see all the sessions. But those that are further down the line, let's say if you have a session that is scheduled for Friday, it will appear, but it will be grayed out, and the student will not be able to click on it. And you would see that if you created a session that is not um, anytime soon, <laughs> it's going to appear there, but it's going to be grayed out. All right. Now, once once here, the student all the student has to do is click on the session title, and it will take them straight to the um, to join session. Yeah, join session, and it takes them to the room. All right. Any other questions on that? Now to switch your rule, and you can ask the questions, just to switch back your rule, you click on the same option um, next to your name, and you return to my normal rule. All right? All right. OK. If you need to edit your, um, go back and edit or make changes, to your session, there's an ellipse within a circle on the right hand side of the um, session name. Click on it. And you can also join the session from there. You can um, get the number to call into the session, edit the session, view reports, delete the session, and so on. All right, so you can click on edit session if you need to change things, settings within the session. Now, while we're here, so you wouldn't have to go back to it. This is also where you would see the, as Michelle said, view reports. Now, view reports means that if you need to take attendance, you want to see a record of the attendance, um, students' attendance in the, in, the, in the session, this is where you will go for it, view reports. All right, so you're going to see who who joined the session, how long they stayed in the session, if they got bumped off and, join, and rejoined the session, it's very, very, very detailed. All right? And you can download it as a Excel or CSV yes. file, Excel document. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do we want to do? Um, were you able to, so could you check for me Click the Agree button if you have been able to create a virtual session within your cl class. Good. OK. All right. Just so you need me to go to, to do it over, I can do it over for you. The oh, screen. the initial screen as in this particular screen or, or? Could you open up your mic and? Um... Oh, this particular screen. OK, so you mean to create the session? Yes. Yeah, hi. Okay. Hello. No. Yeah, you heard me? Um, yes, Roy. Yeah. yeah, so I am in my learning. I'm in the virtual session going through the steps, uh, but that bit where the, the settings, the different um, components of the settings, I'm not seeing it on my e-learning um, 
screen on your side. I, right. I, I am seeing, um, I'm getting down to. Okay, I'm now seeing something that you, you, tick, you click something. Um, <laughs> provide, provide a description. Okay. Right. So you're provide in the setting. Yeah, do you're I in the setting. Provide a description? No, you don't have oh, you to. Don't need to. Or oh, hit create. Yes. I haven't, I haven't put the settings though. So, okay, hit create. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you again, and I think um, the problem. So if I'm I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Murray, you can't. You're not seeing create session. Is that correct? That is correct. You're not seeing, okay, I figured it. Um, yeah. So in a, in a case like that, it, it's something that is not. Um, it's an anomaly, but it's not just localized to, to, to it's not you alone, you are not the only person with this. Apparently, this is a more recent um, uh, query that has been made um, that came with the recent update of my learning. All right, now, and it hinges on what I was saying earlier with the configuration of your particular machine. Um, persons are not always seeing create a session um, when they when they go to this, when they go into the platform. Um, in a case like that, I would recommend try log. I would recommend logging in or accessing the platform on a different machine or even a different browser. All right. Now this is not to join a session. This is just to create your session. And yeah, the reason yeah. I'm saying, mm -hmm. and there's a problem and as well because mm -hmm. one browser, like with Chrome of late, whenever I try to get into mm -hmm. my learning, I'm blocked. It says All right. you can't get in there. So I went to. Um, back to Windows, and I got in there, but I'm getting that. So I'll experiment because I, um, I mean, everything else that you said makes perfect sense. It doesn't, it doesn't okay. need for me to go. Everything else is, you know, I've used Zoom and all these other things. It makes perfect right. sense. I will, I will find. It. So don't worry, don't go all back. Right. Okay, no problem. But just so you know, guys, if you see this problem occur where you don't see create session, which is right here, right, then just try logging in on a different machine. Um, I think it's something that comes with the configuration or updates of the software versus the machine, the local machine. All right, so for example, you may not see it in your course, but if I log into your course on my machine, I might see it. So if you don't see it there, don't panic. Just try logging in from another device, even if it's your phone or a tablet or whatnot, and you should see it. All mm -hmm. right? All right, go ahead, Michelle. Sorry. Okay. No, not a problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do now is once you have done that, you can now join your session. So I'm going to switch screens to um, my shared files. So you are now, sorry, um, you are now into the um, Blackboard Collaborate Room, which you are seeing right now, and you're seeing all your icons as well. So at the top right, top left, sorry, is the session menu, which you, um, when you click that to record your session, you will click here to stop or start your recording. Okay, and this would allow you to help and report any issue with Blackboard Collaborate. You will also see to leave the session in this um, well, semi circular oval shaped um, menu drop down, menu pop out. Okay, um, your space in the middle of your um, screen is where you would share any material, um, right? Um, and to the right, um, this pop-out screen will give you your chat at the bottom, participants, share content, and settings, OK? Um, Justin went, um, sorry. Justin indicated these before, where you have your status, which is the first icon, your microphone on and off, your webcam on and off, and the raise hand icon. 
Okay, so we're going to go through um, these different parts of your uh, your Blackboard Collaborate. You will also see at the top a circle with a, um, a square dot in it. If you are sharing any media at all, this is where you stop share or um, sharing your document. And you will see it in the other slides. Okay. Well, this was, um, we went through this already. This is where we set our session settings. Okay. Right. What you would notice if you click on participants, right, on your window, you will see a little box with maybe three or four lines in it. Are you all seeing that? Could you um, answer yes or no? All right. This tells you your connectivity or the level of connectivity that you have or your the participants have. So if they are experiencing internet problems, if you look at my own, my status, I have three bars as opposed to four. All right. It means that my internet connectivity may be experienced, I may be experiencing some internet connectivity problems. And you may see people, so um, other participants own, go up or drop based on the connectivity that they have with the internet. Hmm? Right, so in your um, My Status, which is at the bottom here, with the little half a man, you can click agree, disagree, happy, faster, um, go faster, slower, confused, sad, away, and the number of participants who have indicated um, or expressed concern or, or clicked any of the feedback will appear at the top, as well as um, next to their name. You will see the icon appearing next to the name of the person who has said yes or smiley face or agreed. So you all can test it out now. Okay. Great. All right. I see Angelique and Mark and Sharon. And okay, good, good. And this is a good way of doing a quick, you know, and a quick poll as well eh? and if you want persons to indicate if they understand anything or they, you know you need something to you need them to go over something if they agree with something it's a really quick a more efficient way of doing a, a an informal poll all right cool all right so right the next icon if you click on the um pull out uh what do you call it collaborate panel on the right side of your screen, you, the purple icon, you will see four icons, the chat, participants, share content, and my settings. All right, so we're going to look at the chat where we can chat with um, in the chat box and say something, or we can chat if you look at the top, you see you're chatting with everyone, or you can chat with the more directly with the moderators. Okay. The second thing we're going to look at is well, let's go. When you click share content, these are some of the things you will see. We have the whiteboard, share the white blank whiteboard share screen or application, share files, polling, they have removed timer, this is an old um, thing, so they have removed timer and breakout room. So we're going to go, be going through each of these um, content that we can share. All right, so our whiteboard, which is the, if you click on share, share content, now you can only share content 
if you are a moderator or given the option to present as a presenter right so some of these icons you will only see if you are a moderator or presenter all right the whiteboard gives you a blank space where you can um share um let participants write on the whiteboard share the um uh point uh draw shapes or write text and erase and at the top you will see a little circle with a square in it that tells you to shop stop sharing you will also see it next to the icon right and any of your participants can do that so we we'll just go to that share the blank whiteboard and i want a few participants to write use the pencil and write or draw a square or shape or use the text the t for text and write something write their name Okay. Now, now go ahead so, and jump. So this, this, this feature is particularly useful when, let's say, you have a particular graphic or illustration on the, on the screen. It doesn't have to be a whiteboard because it can be a PowerPoint as well um, or any file for that matter. So if you have a sort of illustration, let's say, for example, the water cycle, right? And you want your students to label the diagram then this is a really good way to do so. So you can, you know, students, if you have a diagram of the water cycle of a particular process, the student can, you can ask your students to label it. Let's say, for example, to identify where condensation takes place, identify runoff and infiltration and all these other things, or it, it might be a different, another process altogether. All right, so um, there are different ways in which um, you can navigate and engage students using this plat using this feature. Now, it doesn't allow for more complex symbols. Yeah, so Joanne, for example, um, phonetic transcription. <laughs> I'm not too sure it, it, it allows for that. Um, but at least basically anything that is on your keyboard um, or that can be copied and pasted. Um, for the most part, it's not 100% you know, thing. But yeah, it allows for that as well. All right? Yes. 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 I see. Candace. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you could definitely try it even now, Joanne. Or, and I clicked on the link, you can even take them to this page where they can, um, they can you can share the screen here as well. All right? Which we'll get into. Jessel is raising his hand to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jessel. Good, good. Thank you. I, I got on. You're quite correct. I got on on my phone. Great. Um, Great. Right. So it works on the phone. Um, and the only small detail I missed the default attendee role is what? Presenter or moderator? Uh, participant. Or participant. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because so, that's for the student, in other words. Correct. Right, that's all I wanted to do. Okay, great, yeah. thank you. All right, I, I remember hearing it and I forgot. Thank you. No problem at all. And I see Joanne just gave an example. <laughs> I see Joanne gave a phonetic transcription, fair enough. Joanne, did you try putting it on the, on the whiteboard? Oh, it didn't work. Okay, so there we go. All right, so something to note. Actually, look, it worked for me. I, I don't know if. <laughs> yes, it did. Because you could paste anything, just about anything. It'll, it'll translate. But to say type it, or you know, if you're going to get um, type it from a keyboard, it might be a little more limited. So yeah. All right. And if you find that students are, um, you want to erase it. Oh, good question. Um, let me just get to that, Janet. Um, you can always erase it or clear the board and start over. 
Now, this is not just limited to the whiteboard. It's also it also extends to the PowerPoint. PowerPoint, yes. Yeah. So, so that means that yeah, you could bring up the PowerPoint and we could we could label it there. In the meantime, I'll answer Janet's question. Can you put a document on the whiteboard and edit it? What I would recommend, Janet, is and I guess when we go to share share documents, Michelle is gonna cover that, but you're gonna see um if you're sharing a your screen, students may not be able to do it. But if you're sharing a document, then students will be able to annotate, put annotations. So guys, you see here, um, if this represents you, you can just type your name, all right? And this is just to illustrate that it, you can do it on a PowerPoint slide as well, or any document that is compatible with Blackboard, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So go ahead. Anybody else is gonna type your name or if this is you? I feel something. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> all right. Fain of Sharon, yes. I think it's something we could all relate to, right? Now, um, if you realize that students are, uh, I guess Michelle, you could tell them if students are abusing this feature, um, right. how to do it, how right. to tweak it. So if students are abusing these features, then you can always go to my settings, which I will get to in a little while, and turn it off. Okay? So we will get to my settings, which is the gear wheel at the bottom of your screen. And you can adjust some of your settings from there by turning off the annotation feature. Okay? So the next... um option we're going to look at is sharing the screen right which is the icon next to participants or attendees right um and we can do three different ways when you click on share share um the share screen option right we get um three different ways of sharing the screen this box comes up you can share your entire screen share the application window, or share the Chrome tab within your browser, right? Uh, the, the problem with sharing your entire screen is you kind of get what we call an echo. And um, Justin, do you want to show them what, that, what happens? <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> I'm used to being the guinea pig for this. Um. <laughs> So here it is, you get your collapsible um, or, or snowball share screen. Is this it, Michelle? Mm -hmm. All right, so you see here, guys, um, you really don't want to go and click um, just share screen, as Michelle was saying in, in, in the earlier. You want to click on share application window. All right? All right. So let me start so that. Let me just eat, and I know it'll be a little, um, you know, uh, it could make you a little dizzy. <laughs> right. So we want to share basically the application window. All right. So if you have a PowerPoint or another file or a video that you want to sh show your students and it is on your desktop, you open the, the um, document and you share the application window okay the I can demonstrate if you'd like um let me yeah. just share yeah let me just see if i can share my screen so i'm in another session here you're gonna see it in just a bit are you seeing it yeah so i'm just demonstrating the process so remember, we clicked on this middle icon with the arrow, and then you're gonna click share application on screen. All right, and this is the window that Michelle was referring uh, earlier. All right, once you do that, you click application window. So this is what I was referring to. You're not gonna click share your entire screen. Share application window. 
when you click application window, you're going to see all the windows that you have open. All right, and you see I have quite a few. All right, and you're going to select the particular page that you would like to show. So let's say if it's this one, I click on this, and then I click share. All right, and it's as simple as that. Now, when I click that, you're going to see a little thing at the bottom of the screen um, with collab, uh, col uh, what is it? Collab.com is sharing a window. It's basically letting you know that you're, sh it's, you're sharing a screen, much like Zoom. Mm -hmm. All right? OK. Over and to you. Somebody asked, um, Angelique asked, mm -hmm. um, does Safari work well with Blackboard Collaborate and sound? Okay, the problem with sound, Blackboard has a problem with sound. And that is the most frequently asked question um, with regard to using Blackboard Collaborate. It is, the, it is usually a problem with your browser, right? Um, if the easiest way to fix it is use another um, browser, but it usually there's usually a change in the settings in your browser um, that affects you may be using it very well and then suddenly your your sound you're not hearing anything. There's usually a change in the settings in your browser, right? Usually, like in Chrome, you would go to let me see if I can share my screen. Um, but you, what I would usually tell my students, if you're having difficulty with sound, change, um, use another browser. It's the easiest way to fix um, the problem. However, if you're having so, pro, so problems with sound in all your browsers, let me just share my screen. Um, Right, you need to go to your settings, your browser settings, and adjust your for the site settings and adjust your microphone settings for that browser. Sometimes it's turned off, it doesn't allow it isn't allowing the microphone given permission to use your microphone. Okay. So in many instances, this is usually the problem in whichever, um, whichever browser you're using. And as the simplest error um, you will come across. I see um, Mr. Murray has a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, clearly um, 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 sound <laughs> attracts my attention. <laughs> so you're saying that this is a problem with the or direct transmission of the moderator's microphone. Is that what we're speaking of at the moment? And the receipt uh, of that information, is that what you're saying? Especially not in your Murray? microphone. If your students are having problems hearing Receiving. You, right, yes. of course. Right. It's usually a problem with the settings in their browser. Okay, so that's one thing. So two, when I because I have to use multiple recordings, and is that it's the same sort of problem that they may have just meaning on their back end on just on the receipt of the sound. Um and I think you see Angelique is asking about playing things for students with sound. So she's talking about playback as well. She right. just clarified in the chat. And right. of course, I, I, I'm joining her in that question. <laughs> OK, so one of the things, um, when you're sharing videos and stuff, mm -hmm. right, and you choose, like, for example, let me just go back, um, share application screen, and you want to say share a video on YouTube, there is a check box at the bottom of the window that allows you to share your audio. If that is not shared, then nobody will hear what you are playing. 
Okay, all right. So it's very much like a Zoom, Zoom, same yeah. thing with Zoom. Okay, yeah. all right. And I see Joanna's also talked about um, the same thing as well. So we all have those same concerns about getting sound. All right, well, thank you. Um, off stage. Definitely. Um, and if you need to, to, let's say, for example, share, uh, oh, sorry, um, something I was just reading the chat. Sorry. If you need to, to share a video or whatnot, as, 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 as Michelle was saying, then you can do so by sharing your screen. And I think they will still hear it. Not so, Michelle? Yes, but. Um, and it, there's another way you can do it. If you have, now, this is the way I prefer to do it. Now, of course, it may not always, it's not a one size fits all kind of situation. But um, most times in my, when I'm doing a similar thing, I would just provide the link in the chat. So let's say I have that video audio file and it doesn't have to be a YouTube video. It could be something you have in, in a Google Drive. Once you have that material, you can just share the link to that um, in the chat, share the link to that, that file and um, that audio file or video file. And then let students listen to it or look at it. And then you come back and you ask questions in it. So you give them like about a two minutes, or, but depending on how long it is, you give them the time to listen or to, to look at it. And then um, you fold it into your instruction thereafter. All right. So even if it's something that you're afraid of, let's say you, I'm saying if you have problems where you are playing it on your end and they are not hearing it, you can also send them the link and they can play it and hear it on their end. All right, so it's just a work around. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Let me get back to my slides. Right. As I said, um, you can choose the Chrome tab. So if you have all your windows open, you can choose which tab to allow people to see. Okay. And you will also see the button at the bottom here, share audio. All right. Make sure it's checked if you want to share the sound coming from the particular website, for example, um, YouTube. All right. The next, um, thing on the list is share files. So let me just show you the list again. All right? So we have um, share white um, blank whiteboard, share application screen. So now we are into share files. And this is where um, your PowerPoint, if you are sharing a file, there are only certain types of files that you can share. Images, PowerPoint, or PDF. Your PowerPoint, however, comes into Blackboard as a PDF file. It is converted to a PDF file and comes into Blackboard. So you may as well save your PowerPoint as a PDF if you are sharing it like this. Right? That means there wouldn't be any animation or any of the fancy stuff that you would see if you're running a normal PowerPoint. Any questions? Once you add the file and you click share now, um, then the person, then your participants is able to see the files. The next. <laughs> yes, it's a pity about the PowerPoint. <laughs> um, but the good thing about it is that when it's shared, um, when it's shared, whether it's a PowerPoint or, or image or whatnot, like I said before, when it's shared, when just go to the previous slide, please, Michelle. Uh, yeah, when it's shared like this, it's just like what we have here. So you could easily put annotations, the students can put annotations on the slide, but when you're sharing it, um, students wouldn't be able to, when you're sharing the screen or externally, students will not be able to put in annotations. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
someone said, Savina, can we run a PowerPoint and share up? Yes, you can share the screen. But like I said, if, they, if you're sharing it, you're not going to, um, they wouldn't be able to put in annotations and those different things. Um, if you want transitions, yes, yes definitely. Yes, yes. yes you're on the I mean, application you're, window. Yes. You need to share the application window and not your entire desktop. I was going to give you a little clap there, uh, um, Sharon. So good. That's the closest, um, quickest emoji I could find. All right, go ahead, Michelle. Um, I think somebody had their hands up. Oh, they took it down. Okay. Um, so the next one is I'm going to go on to the settings. Um, Krishna asked the question. <coughs> if um, So if we have video link on PowerPoint slide, we can show them exactly <coughs> through sharing of files. <coughs> right? Indeed. So in a case like that, Krishna, you'd probably just need to copy the link and paste it in the chat. That would be one way to do it. All Which right? is what I did for the answer garden. I copied the exactly. and print, saved it in the chat. Okay. All right. So the next icon we're going to look at is the settings icon. And this is where you can actually, while you're in the session, make some minor changes to your settings. So you have like the notification settings and the se and session settings, All right? And let me show the notification settings because um, this wasn't set initially in when we were setting it up. Um, and this deals with the sound and the pop-outs that you get when you are in your session. So you may see people asking questions and there's a little bubble pop out telling you what is um, notifying you what people said, the chat notification or the breakout room notification and so on. Now I have my, my audio notification turned off. So because I don't like to hear this beep, 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 I will see the notification but wouldn't hear the, um, the sound because I find the sound a little distracting. Okay. So you can do it, make those settings there. Sorry. And you can also um, mute people, um, adjust your audio settings, video settings, um, allow people to post or stop them from writing on the whiteboard and so on, the annotation on your screen if you find people are your participants are writing on your screen while you are doing an activity so you can adjust some of these settings here okay so while you're in the session you can also adjust your settings all right so the next one is polling which is what um Justin did at the beginning of the session. Just just one sec, Michelle, if you don't mind. Um, Go ahead. Colleagues, I see I'm just taking stock of the time. Um, I know we waited a couple of minutes to, to, to start for everyone to get here, but is it okay if we just uh, go a little, just about 10 minutes, just to cover polling and breakout rooms? We're almost through. Um, so I'm just negotiating with you. <laughs> Okay, great. No problem. Thank you so much for that. Okay, thank you so much for that. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay, so polling allows you to take a quick check of your audience. You can ask them a question, either a multiple choice question or a yes, no question. Um, however, it's a live thing that you have to do, so you have to do it while you are in your meeting, right? Um, let me see if I, right, no, that was the slide I missed. Yeah, so it allows you to um, type in a question and type in an answer and send it to the participants. 
So Justin, would you like to send us a poll? <laughs> send the students another poll? <laughs> sure, no problem. At this time, our participants. And one of the good things is that if you have a number of questions to ask your participants during the session, you can have it saved, the questions saved on a Word document and so that you can easily copy and paste it into the, um, the poll instead of having to type the poll during your session. Type of the question and the responses. <clears throat> And so we have the 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 pool here. All right. Okay, no problem, Sabrina. I think Sabrina needed to know where the pool is located. Um, okay, yeah. so let me just go back to the share screen. Mm, the application. If you want, I can also illustrate it on my end um, with the share screen. Okay. All right. So let me just. Yes, all right. Oh, wrong side. <laughs> all right. Um, Right. The polling you will see in your share content. When you click on the share content box icon, it is right here. So Justin, if you want, you can go ahead and share your um, polling, how to do the polling. Okay, no problem. Okay, great. So guys, it's very um, so we see here, and I'm not sure if you missed that when I when I was sharing my screen. Um, we we if the if your Blackboard session, and this is a good way you could tell with students too, if your Blackboard session remains inactive for um, an excessive period of time, then the room will close and well you will be bumped out of the room not so michelle so that's just a little you know tidbit um so your students can't just turn on the class and then go in the kitchen to make some dinner while, while you were going on right they would need to be actively involved all right so yes yeah, so first thing we click on this little our icon here and then we click on polling it's going to ask you, as Michelle identified, multiple choice or yes or no choices. We click in this case, uh, yes or no. And then we um, insert the prompt. Now, you could copy and paste this prompt, as Michelle suggested, or you can type it. Um, if it's a multiple choice, I would recommend that you copy and paste from a Word document or, or something. Um, so let's say, are you hungry? Now, this is in a different room, so you're not going to see, <laughs> right? But from the time you click share, uh, start, it's going to come in the middle of the, um, of the session. All right? Similar to what we have in our room. Okay. All right? I think that's it. Um, any other questions on pools? Right. Okay. So if you um, want to use more of a Likert type scale, you might want to um, use the multiple choice, agreed, um, good, very good, not so good. Um, and, not, and another thing too would be if you were to use an external platform um, to create uh, quick polls and so on, you can share the link in the chat as well. So students can click, just like what we did with Answer Garden, you just share the link and students will answer accordingly. All right? All right. And yes, Roy, it depends on the, the objective and 
um, where, where the pool for the activity falls in your instruction. So yes, so you're definitely on the right track. Right. So after polling, we are going to look at breakout rooms. All right, so right under polling, you have the option to create breakout rooms where you can um, divide your participants into groups. You can do that both automatically or, um, let me think, I think this is the one. You can do it randomly or automatically or manually, sorry, by putting them into groups. And you can also assign the moderators, whoever is in the group, to join one of the groups. So you can also see how many participants you want in each group and how many groups you want as well. All right? You may want also your attendees to um, switch groups, may or may not, depending on what activity you're doing. So for example, if you're doing a jigsaw type um, strategy, teaching strategy, you may want to have them switch between groups after, say, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Okay. And you can also shuffle your attendees if you are having another breakout session within your, your class. Essence, or do you want the can I go on? So this is actually setting up your breakout rooms. Once you have set it up, um, you will see the groups. You can rename the group, or if you click on the ellipse next to the place name, you can manually move them to another group. And then you can start your breakout session. So it's like having people in different groups in your class working on some particular task. Comments, questions, comments, queries. Um, Justin, do you want to, to make a couple people moderators? so that they can actually see the icon and have a look at it. Sure, sure. In the meantime, I guess you could, um, Soleil has a question. So. Go ahead, Soleil. When they are in the groups, whoever is in the same group can um, interact with each other. Um, okay. Um, they will not be able, you cannot record within groups. Only the uh, moderators can record in the main room. But what you can do is you can give them an assignment, let them have their discussion within the breakout room, and then when they come back, rejoin the main room, you can ask them to share what they have done or what discussion they have had. So I made a couple of persons moderators, and guys, you would see the the um, you would you would have gotten those of you who were made moderators, you would have seen a little notification appeared on your screen, close to the top right side, that you have now been a moderate made a moderator. All right, and um, and you're gonna see these settings now. Please don't put us into breakout rooms just yet. But you can navigate at least to that point just so you can see what it looks like. All right. Now, case in point, well, not case in point. Now, it's one thing to, to point out, sorry, is that when you put persons into breakout rooms, unlike Zoom, the breakout rooms are not recorded. Mm -hmm. All right. So, for example, it, 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 while in Zoom, you can re get recordings of what students are doing in the breakout rooms. In Blackboard, it only records the main room. So for example, we are in the main room right now. All right. Um, however, you can 
as a moderator, um, jump from group to group just to supervise and ensure that you know to provide some guidance with the group work. Now, normally, what I do in, in using this feature, you give them the instructions, and they're all in the main room. So let's say a room like this, you give them the main instructions, and they they you give them a time. Let's say you give them 10 minutes. Now we don't have the timer in this platform anymore, which normally what I will do is just say, okay, by 3.50, we will all be brought back into the main room. Now you don't get a countdown, you don't get you know a little notification. Blackboard does it quite abruptly. <laughs> so, <laughs> as soon as you end the groups, it, it brings them back into the main room. All right, so we're going to do it very, very quickly, not too, not too long, all right, just so you see what it looks like. Is that OK? You can yeah. indicate the chat or the, click the icon. OK, no great. So um, I'm going to put some of us in groups just for like about five seconds. And then we're going to following the same steps. So I just clicked on the middle icon with the arrow. Um, I'm going to randomly assign. I'm going to include moderators in the group assignment. All right. Um, I'm going to put you in groups of, let's say, five. All right. And then, um, then you click Start. All right. So let me just walk someone through it. Um, let me see. Oh, Roy, actually, I should yeah, choose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Roy. So, but Roy, I need you to listen very carefully to what I'm telling you because I don't want you to, to switch things up and um, because it's being recorded. So I didn't want to, um, for review purposes, because you're going to get this recording after, I don't want to confuse you with um, too many wrong directions. All right. So, so listen to me carefully. So. You're going to click on that arrow, the middle icon, next to the, on the right side of the participants icon. Red arrow. The, the icon in the bottom of the right, the bottom of the right side of the screen. Yes. Right. So are you seeing an icon with an arrow? Yeah, the, the, the tick. It's, I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the tick. Uh, the, the video off. No, no, no. Yeah, and the wrong one. So, okay. So go back to the lower right side. Yeah, I'm the same. You, the same icon. You click for the chat. Right. Two icons to the right, you're going to see one with a little arrow on it, almost like an attachment icon, like an email attachment or download icon. Box with a, a little box with a little arrow on it, pointing yes, to yes, the right. Yes, yes. Right. And that. Self-check evaluation. Sorry? When I click on that, self-check evaluation came up. No, I think oh, it's in the um, share content, share files. So oh, there's I'm an arrow that is on your name, on Michelle. Yeah, yes. So I just stop, stop sharing. So you um, go back to share content. So are you seeing um, the icons, share whiteboard, share applications? I'm seeing, I'm seeing share content, that arrow. Right. Click on that back arrow for me, please. Yeah. Right. And well, are you seeing breakout groups? Are you seeing breakout groups? Yeah, breakout groups, yes. Right. Click on that, please. Yes. Assign groups, number of groups. Right. So we want you to randomly assign and the number of groups would be how many people we have here in the we have 20 we have 19 now so we could have six groups of three or <laughs> it's not an even number 
it wouldn't it doesn't matter <laughs> well, I, could put, um, I could put four, four, five, groups. four or five groups yeah Right. Okay. Somebody okay. else. Right. Yeah. I've seen the main room. Yeah. Okay. You are ready to go. Right, so in the main room has nine members. So I just ended the breakout room. I'm not too sure how many persons were in the breakout rooms. All right, um, because I know the moderators, I don't think the moderators, the persons I made moderators. Moderators were in the breakout room because they didn't select um, the moderators. Yeah. the moderators should enter the breakout rooms. Yeah, I think Roy clicked it a little too early, but that's okay. But yeah, I didn't I didn't get a chance to click. Somebody click. I didn't, uh, I didn't click on the click. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, and that's <laughs> and that, that's no problem. That's okay. We're about to end, so you know, um, that's okay, Joan. <laughs> but now we see why you, I was saying earlier you, you should only have at least one or two moderators per um, session because students could easily hijack your session, and then you have to start from scratch, right? So <laughs> they pick the moderator. What? Um, what's that? I said the, the moderator, uh, earlier on your show, you indicated that you could have either the moderator or a participant mm -hmm. as the chair, as you see in um, Mr. Face. And, right. and you put it into your settings. Yeah. Oh, right. So when it comes to doing the group formation now, you mm -hmm. should have to indicate, um, specify the moderator. Okay, good question, good question. So basically you're saying that um, when you created a session, you wanted all participants, that is correct, right? Good question, Roy. When you want, let's say you wanted, you put students into groups and you want them now to become, um, uh, to do a presentation in your session. Is that what you're asking in that context? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. In a case like that, I'm not sure if we showed them that already, Michelle, or no? No, <laughs> no, no. All right, so to do that, um, you're gonna see, when you go to the participants list, so Roy and all the other persons who are moderators now, as we're wrapping up, I'm gonna ask you to make other persons moderators. So it's a simple procedure. All you have to do is click on the participants um, icon. That's next to the participants name. Mm -hmm. well, let me go back to the... Um, you have to refresh to see current settings. No, 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 you're not going to current settings and so on. Go to the part, attendees list. Allow <coughs> attendees to switch groups? No, 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 you're in the wrong session. <laughs> next, go to, click on the icon next to, okay, next to the chat, on the right side of the chat. Mm -hmm. You will I see, see an second. icon. You're going to see an icon with two persons. Yes. Right. Attendees, yes, yes. Great. So you're going to see next to each person's name, you're going to see an ellipsis with a circle <laughs> with an inside or three dots inside. Mm -hmm. If you scroll yeah. down, you're going to see participants. If you look on the screen, this is it here. Yeah, right. yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing participants here. Yeah. Right, so click on the three dots next to the, on the right side of the person's name. Okay. And you should see a menu to make moderator, make presenter, make, you know, etc. So what I want you to do is make make the person a moderator. Now you have to go to the participants list because if it's a moderator already, you can't make a moderator a moderator. All right. Yeah, so, so from the participants list, make list. them a presenter. <coughs> yeah, make, make them a presenter. Just click on it. 
click on the three dots. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Sharon is our presenter. Right. Sharon, sorry. Yeah. Right. So, simple yeah. So the other guys who are moderators, could you make other persons presenters? Okay, yeah, Dr. Shami. Um, make presenter. Right. So I'm seeing the presenters listening and expanding. Good. Now this is okay. what you do want your students. So let's say if um, in Keisha's uh, course, you might have your students. You know, might, your students might want you might want your students to present on something. Or Joanne's course, you might want them to present on something. Um, I keep choosing Joanne because and Keisha and so because I <laughs> background, right? So <laughs> we have a street. So um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So if you want your students to be presenters, that is the 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 way the method to do it. All right, um, you go to the attendees list, you click on the three dots, all right? Much like this little, the three dots you see here and this little, um, and the slide. Yeah. And then you will see a little menu appear next to it. When you click on the three dots, you'll see a menu appear, um, make presenter, make moderator. Yes. You can even throw a Saudi room if they are very disruptive. And I'm not saying you should, but that's also a course of action, right? Um, yeah. And, yeah, so you have all those features there. Remove from session as well. <laughs> yeah, but don't remove anybody from the session, please. Right. And I think Michelle showed how to record a session already, so you know where to click for that, right? Um, yeah. Don't click that yet, please, because we don't want to disrupt the recording, because I want to make it a nice, tight recording for you for review purposes. All right. Um, anything else, Michelle? I think. I think no, that's it. It's, oh, um, attendance and how to get the recording. Right. We showed the attendance already. Um, right. It's the recording. So guys, just let me, just permit me to share my screen and I'll show you where to get the recordings. All right. And that is just two seconds. All right. So let me just pull a window that I know I'll have some. Uh, All okay. okay. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Right. I, I just had to mute someone because I was seeing a, a, a little echo there. And you would notice, just back up a little bit, when you go to the attendees session, or attendees menu, you could see persons, I think Michelle went through this, the, internet, the quality of the internet connection. You can also see the whose mic is on and who needs to be muted, um, if you, because you could get feedback, right? So just so you know. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're back to this particular page. And to access the recordings, you're going to go just as, as is. So let's say I want to change to a student. All right, so the student is going to access your course, similar to this. Click on virtual sessions or classroom. And at the very top here, under the exact title, under the title of the session, under the title of the Blackboard room, you're going to see these three lines. All right, when you click on these three lines, it says recordings or sessions, right? When you click on recordings, it's going to show you all the recordings, even if it's now it, by default it's set to 30 days, but it doesn't mean that outside of 30 days your recordings are deleted. Your recordings will be there at least for the entire semester. If you need to look for a specific recording, you could um, set a filter um, or date range. So let's say from now we don't have anything from in this particular um, session, right? In this particular room, but that is just how you go about it. All right. Or you can search by title. All right, which is why it's so important if you're using multiple rooms and so on that you give you give them an appropriate or specific title. Title, yes, so that they can find the the session, the recording easily. Do you want me to show you one, one more time? Let me do it one more time. 
So, and of course, we have documentation on this, so that will be sent to you following this, this session, all right, along with the recording. So, you go to the room, to the, sorry, to the course, you click on virtual sessions or classroom, all right, then you click on the three lines up here. It's, you just think of a black strip with three white lines, all right, on the left side. You click on that, you're going to see sessions, and then you're going to see recordings or session recordings, right? You click on recordings, and you're going to see all the recordings that you have for the past, well, however long. It doesn't have to be 30 days. It can be for the entire semester. I would recommend that by the end of the semester, if you would like to back up your recordings, then by the end of the semester, before the following semester, you should try to save them um, just as a backup for reviewing purposes and so on for your personal um, teaching practice. All right. This, uh, I think that's about it. Any yeah. other questions, guys? It's a very quiet class. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Georgina. Thank you so much for that. Anybody else? I take it you're probably just processing what we what we covered, right? Yes. Hi, Georgina. Thank you so much, Jessa. Yes, and I like what, what you said as well, uh, uh, Ms. Marie, with, with regard to practice. Because, I mean, practice now would help you to commit what you learned today into long-term memory, right? Now it's stored in short-term memory, and as you practice it a little more, it's going to be committed to long-term memory. All right? Now, we do have a, uh, an evaluation that should have been sent to you um, during the course of this session. So please feel free to, to complete that form um, so we can get some tips on how to improve. All right? Thank you so much again, colleagues, for joining us on this session. And I hope, oh, you're going to get, like I said, the, the recording and the um, additional resources. All right? Thank you so much for joining us once again, and um, have a great afternoon, everyone. And Michelle, as you would normally say. <laughs> yeah. <please treat. laughs> okay. Wear a mask. <laughs> All right. Have a great evening, everyone. You're most welcome, Roy. <laughs>